Hello, my YouTube friends, and I cannot believe 2020, what a year we've been having. I think every month we've been wondering what's next. And I think personally, like there's a lot of decisions and things that have happened either to Sri and I or happened because of the situation that I would have never foreseen coming. Like we've entered into don't hate us and don't unfollow us for this. Or if you like this, follow us more and give us some love. A plant-based diet. Can you believe it? Like we're eating plant-based. But I knew I had to do a reduction diet because of just my body, just you know, trying to figure some things out. And it is working. We're absolutely loving it. Of course, my wife is the garden master, so that helps as well. But I'm thinking about just all the changes that you know we make in, in seasons of intensity, seasons where so much is on the table of the earth right now, so you know, as far as decision making, as far as oppression, as far as hardship. And so everybody makes different decisions. And in some ways, if you're listening to God, if you're close to God, if you're spending time with God, this is the perfect time to allow God to recreate areas that maybe were still working for you, but they just weren't his highest or his best. Or maybe you have to recreate or you have to change some things and you get an opportunity to really explore new areas of your identity or where you're at. And so we've been in this really unique period during this time. But about a year ago uh, or a little over a year ago, I was in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and it was uh, it was in March and I was prophesying over the congregation that was there. It was one of our events and we have a recording from that. And I want us to listen to it for just a minute for those of you who are aware of what's happening right now in America, in the black-white issue, which is such an important, valuable issue in our nation. And I want you to hear this just because I think it provides a spiritual hope that I think is really interesting. What is your destiny? There's things that God has put as labels on you as a state and as a city of Minneapolis and St. Paul that he's put, I'm telling you, he's put labels on here. It's not just a mall, right? You're not gonna just be known for a few things. But the Lord's put labels, and some of you are going to identify and actually brand the labels up from heaven of what this people group is supposed to be known for. The last thing I want to say about this is that I saw the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to move something between races here that's going to work differently than a lot of other places. And people are going to look at it as a pilot way to do racial reconciliation. Something's going to be moving here. On how, to, how to help uh, marginalized people. Something's going to move here. And I feel like uh, the eyes of America are going to be on here differently than they've been on other places for racial issues because other places have been the trauma, but here it's going to be because of the goodness that God has a plan and there's already manifestors of that plan already being set in place for education, politics, and even some of the industry uh, uh, awareness that's gonna happen, that's gonna cause people to look at this state and go, they have a lot of programs emerging where the marginalized aren't so marginalized anymore, where just different races that have been treated uh, with without economic justice and without equal rights are actually being treated with complete equal rights. And we need to look at what Minnesota is doing so that we can recreate some of those exact same experiences for other places. And I feel like it's an undercurrent uh, civil rights movement yeah. that's here that's totally different than other places because it's not going to be a loud shouting movement. It's going to be, we're going to change policies and procedures. We're going to change opportunities. And then all of a sudden it'll just manifest. People are going to look at it and go, your numbers statistically are unbelievable in the nation. Who here cares about that kind of issue? Right? That's not true in every state. So even your wired to think about that kind of issue differently. You actually care about these kinds of issues like women's pay and different races, how they're not equally paid or have equal opportunities. You're wired to think about that because God wants to bring a role model to America. And what if it was Minnesota? What if God did something here where he raised up some political leaders that weren't the normal? I've seen one tonight. So wow, God cares about racial issues. God cares about civil rights. He cares about economic justice. He cares about fair pay. He cares about, you know, the actual human rights of the situations going on. And many times when we see something break out, the first breakout is either the enemy energizing something or it's human pain or it's just humanism justice or sometimes there's even a God seed and it just gets misrepresented or, or, or unpacked wrongly. And so we're in the midst of a lot of mixture of how this thing has broken out. But in the middle of it, there's a God seed where humanity is feeling, especially in America, that something has to change in the way that we treat each other. One of the things Jesus prayed in John 17 was for unity, that we would all be one, that we'd all have the same opportunity to know him as he's one in the Father, to be one with him. And that was this 
this like anti-racism, anti-segregation, anti-class system kind of a prayer that was so beautiful where he's saying we should all be one. We should all love one another and he, the way he loved us. And it was just such a beautiful you know, passage of scripture. It's one of my favorites. But I think in unpacking that word now realize as a prophetic person, we're always going to see in part. And so I didn't see that there would be racial riots. I didn't see that there would be a terrible issue. Hashtag George Floyd. I'm so sad. Like, well, our heart, we've had godly sorrow about this situation and all the other ones that aren't named in the newspaper or in the presses or in the media. There's so many situations that have been compounded over so long. And so for those of you who are you know, not in the side of understanding why this is such a big deal, maybe from another country, or you don't see into it, you may see what the America propaganda news puts out of a political party or different people who are really wounded. But in the core of this whole issue, if you're not understanding it, is God wants freedom and justice, and he wants what's right. And that's what humans are starting to align with is saying, we want what's right. On top of that, there's all kinds of other agendas, but we want what's right. And I love that when I spoke this word, there was racial tension, but it was undercurrent. And I love that it speaks of a time prophetically that will come not too long from now where this, I love the, the phraseology, which I've never said before, this won't be a loud movement. This won't be yelling and screaming, but it will be people will look in and see the metrics have changed or statistics have changed in Minnesota and they'll want to replicate it. That's what I'm looking for. So I start to get a lot of hope even rehearing this word myself and going, God, you care so much about this that people from different parts of the nations, you're setting Minnesota up and Minneapolis up so people from other areas can look at how they're doing police force and look at how they're doing different areas and say, we want to do our education system that way. We want to have our corporations have economic justice like that. We want to kill systemic poverty. We want to do these kinds of things. And so I thought it was really exciting and I wanted to bring it up to you guys because part of exploring the prophetic journey is there's words like this that are released and at the time they make a little bit of sense but they're not highlighted in a massive national way or in a massive in the industry or whatever and then something happens and people look back and go, didn't you say something about that? Or wait a minute, you gave a word that gives us so much hope or like I've had uh, the senator that we had on our podcast that night, we did a live podcast recording for Exploring the Prophetic and he was sharing his journey there and he's reached out with his family since then and said, wow, you know, we're in the middle of something that could be really special for the state of Minnesota to change something here. And it's also a very volatile time, a time that we could all pray for Minnesota, pray for Minneapolis, but pray for what God's doing. And some of you get burdened with these issues, like you feel the Spirit of God burden you and you don't realize that those little power prayers of 20 second prayers when you get burdened with it are huge for the time that something the enemy had planned this great injustice the enemy had planned this great almost uh, rebellion against true justice in the midst of what you know was happening around the, the the riots but in the middle of that we also had peaceful protest movement and we had people using their voice like we haven't seen in a whole generation. It's just the amount of people over the world who are protesting and peaceful protest to say something about justice was so profound. It was a level of unity and, and it has to be looked at, which I think is very important because our, our children are looking at us and seeing how we're gonna to respond to this injustice. And so I think in that sense, when we prophesy, you know, we have to realize that God does wanna reconcile major issues and we might play one small part with the prophetic word, just for the person in front of us. It could be for the person who's different than us right now, who's right in front of us that we speak to, or it could be you know, a, a prophetic person visiting your church and sharing something about your church or your region. But in that, there's always laced in and sown in hope, even if they see in part, even you know, like I didn't see all of this, I couldn't have told you I saw that this would happen this year or how it would happen, but I did see something was up in you know, social justice and kingdom rights between black and white and civil rights. And how cool is that? And that's who our God is. And so leave a comment below if you've had prophetic words or if you've heard prophetic words that you're still looking forward to seeing what they actually mean. Because maybe you heard something, but the, there's not the actual revealing of it yet. There's not the actual, it hasn't happened in culture. It hasn't moved forward. But things you're believing for that are big, huge things. Let's, let's share those together. Maybe it's over a whole people group. Maybe it's over racism. Maybe it's over industries. Maybe it's over the environment. Let's just let's just share those together and then do a little prayer time for the ones that you see if you look through the comments. Pray for those people who are believing for those big things, just like we pray. I get to pray for you guys. I get to look through the comments and respond or just pray for you guys as well. So thanks so much for joining. Subscribe to this if you like it. Share it with those who are around you if this makes sense to them, especially people who are asking, does God care about huge issues like racism? Share this video because it gives them a glimpse that yes, God does care. 
Thanks so much for watching. You guys, thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. We have so many resources for you. You may not know this, but we have like an online mentoring program that you can join and get five videos a week where I process your prophetic journey with you. You can be one of the, the guest mentorees. Each week I have a guest video for 15 minutes where we process questions and answers together. And we do so much more. I hope you guys will join that. We also have a lot of books out. I have Translating God and Breakthrough Prayer Book and all these different books that I know you guys would love. If you visit our bowlsministries.com site, you will find all of our materials and everything we have available for you.